Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This is Clive Barker's Undying. Yes, I did not just temporarily forget the name. This is a horror first person shooter game. We can expect to find lots of supernatural kind of stuff going on here. And we are going to play this on medium. So let's get the game started. Starting with cutscenes. 1923, October. Ah. Uh. I'm tired of traveling, or fighting superstition and its many manifestations. Even though it was me who chose to debunk folklore and mysticism, little did I know I'd end up being labeled as Patrick Galloway, the man with endless occult knowledge. Before I knew it, people all over the world paid me to investigate all kinds of weird things. <laughs> as long as they paid me, I'd look into it. Funny thing though, the more I saw, the more I believe there are forces beyond our control. Creatures not explainable in any human terms. Things that make me skin crawl. I fled from Ireland and hung around Paris and London with no real purpose till the Great War started. I joined a special unit whose job it was to squelch the fears of the superstitious farm boys who made up the fighting ranks. The Trasanti were the biggest pains. Me commanding officer, Jeremiah Covenant, led our unit in the hunt for their camp. We were ambushed. They came streaming out of the woods, waving swords and howling like banshees. I saw their leader holding a strange stone over his head, yelling weird words in a strange tongue. And just when I was going to pull the trigger, he glared right at me. A bright green flash came from his hand, and it bowled me over as my gun went off. I woke up in a hospital bed with severe burns. They told me Jeremiah and the unit had gone on without me, but he'd given me the shaman stone to keep. I hadn't given any of this much thought until I came back here to find this letter that Jeremiah wrote me almost six months ago, asking me to come back to Ireland and help him out. This is not something I'm dying to do, for it may mean the death of me. He saved my life though, so I owe it to him. Just hope it's not too late. And so that was the beginning of the cutscene. And for some odd reason, F3 is the journal. I don't know why, but it is. But I'm gonna read all this out for you. A spell that allows me to see and hear past events from the geographic location in which I happen to be standing. It also casts an internal light. No, that's not internal, that's a fifth wall. Damn it, bow. It also casts an ephemeral light on enemies and dark areas, giving me the ability to see my foes as well as find my way. I must be careful in its use, as it has no offensive power and it seems to drain my energies for so short durations. Learned men have stated they have believed that man has yet to not the full potential of the mind. While travelling to the UN after the war, I have met up with a local seer who told me that I was one of the chosen few. One of only a handful of individuals who tried to... Mm, he had ever met that had this ability, he called it screen. To be able to read portions of the past, most of the people who have possessed this power, he said, over the course of their lives eventually fell into disability, mind tired from the barrage of images and sounds that could be heard from both the past and the present, the real and unreal. I now have the abilities of scry scree, I can't say the word I know, because of the subtle words I hear calling with me at times, begging me to look deeper into the past, deeper uh, what actually isn't even in front of me. But I'm truly wondering if this is the gift I dreamed of a sick cut or of or a sick curse placed on me by an outside force. Well, I guess we're going to find out for the course of the game, aren't we, Patrick? But yeah, that's basically the first spell in the game. We can look up stuff that isn't actually there that other people can't see. My trusty revolver, a six shot weapon of forged metal grace. Du durable yet lightweight. My military piece has seen many a country and spilled much blood over the years. Basically the first weapon in the game and we have limited ammo for it. The Gaussi Bar Stone. I have carried this artifact ever since the day Gemma gave it to me following the battle with the Tuansus Tuansi. I can't say the name I know. It seems to throw out a shockwave of considerable force and even and ever since I acquired the stone I have noticed strange sightings and visual anomalies. However, the power of the stone has its start aside. On occasion, a beast from beyond this world has attacked me. My only explanation for its appearance is that I was using the stone's power for too long. I have not seen the beast for a while, of course, I have not needed the stone. Interesting. But basically the stone will help us with uh, magic stuff. 
I'll explain a bit later on. Or I'll try to anyway. Now to read this diary which is basically the intro. Each time a past fades from memory, fate has a terrible habit of awakening me. Most often the impressionant name of Arthur Kingston is the vehicle of remembrance, remembrance but not today. My, f my old friend and commanding officer in the Great War, German Covenant, has sent word. It has been years since I heard from him. His letter came whiles away. She had unopened for nearly six months. My joy at reading his name was quickly replaced by Saul. Then my fear, Gemini has fallen ill and requires my assistance as a state in Ireland. I have not set foot on Irish soil since poor Grenadine's death, and I did not think anything could make me return. I don't know who Grenadine's death is, but well, I guess we may find out. Could I be responsible for her death? Being legally exiled from my homeland was painful, but nothing in comparison to my memories. How did she end up on the floor? How could so much blood come without my uh, sound? How was that knife in my hand and why was Kingston suddenly nowhere to be found? But Jerma saved my life and I cannot deny any quest he would make. The necessity of my presence is somewhat vague, as his letter at times was incoherent. He speaks of his sickness as a family illness, no medicine can cure. Regardless, I will go to my friend. I have but patches on a steam liner leaving tomorrow, arriving in four days time. I hope I am not recognised by the authorities, I hope I am not too late. But you just, but you appear on the on our little sailing boat, which I can't see from here. Stop. Yes, thank you, Patrick. I know. Jammed. Hello, what the fuck's that? What the hell was that? Stop. I really don't want to know what the hell I just saw there. I've never seen that before in the beginning. God damn it. Yes, thank you game, I have read the journal, I've run through it. Well, but this is the stone. Those rats are screwing away. These rats can attack you, and they do damage. So I'm being careful of avoiding them if possible. There's a person over here. I try and do this fast because the lightning is very loud. Hello. He You're does. Jeremiah's old war buddy, right? Yes. Indeed. Patrick, you don't you don't answer with indeed. The guy I don't know why the guy's working this late why thunder and stuff's going on. The guy must be drenched. By the way, you saw the stone flush then? It's because of this, and I warn people that those that Oh bats. People don't don't like Seeing buddy's hand and stuff. There's gonna be one right here when I click this button. So I've warned you. I've got a couple of stouts in the way. Look, sir, I'm trying to do something dramatic, and you just uh, what? Uh, huh? God damn you! Why does everyone always interrupt me when I'm trying to shoot? Huh? Fine. That is very nasty. Rats, you rats drinking his blood. Oh god. There is no way for anyone to die. That poor man. I was so bad to attack you as well. And a one's just circling away, one's circling in the middle. Anyway, enough of the lightning, let's go in. I'm Patrick Galloway, a friend of Jeremiah's. Sorry it took me so long to get here. His letter said it was most urgent. Jeremiah is beginning to think that the letter never arrived in your hands. He's been quite anxious to see you. We've all been quite worried. Jeremiah is now bedridden. Follow me and I'll show you to his living quarters. I apologize for the look of the house, but there's only a skeleton crew of servants now. Jeremiah let go of everyone else, and the house is much too large for us to clean. Because we've lost electricity to most parts of the house, we can only maintain the living quarters. This family's had so much tragedy. I hope you can help him. I was certainly trying my best, maid. That. I'll probably never see again. Yeah, you wander off, meaning you're gonna die. Wonderful. Won't budge. All the doors are stuck, and this one doesn't even have a bloody handle. 
So Patrick basically has to go charging into it. Stuck. Head first and probably break his head. Is there anything else I need to talk about? I don't really think so. Hmm. Let's. Hello. Oh, hello, sir. Nice suit you got on. Yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. You do that. Very mysterious. Hello. Naked man shoving his thing at me. Nothing unusual. It's all completely fine. And now for this. Patrick, you made it. At your service, Jeremiah. Sorry for the delay, but I've been abroad. What happened to you? It seems I've come under the watchful eye of the Reaper, my friend. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Apparently too long. Patrick, I came back from the war only to find my entire estate in disarray. My brother Aaron disappeared first, and then my sister Bethany. My declining health is a result of an old war wound, and unfortunately the symptoms are irreversible. I didn't summon you here to watch me die. I need your help. Anything I can oh, do. God. Just name it. Strange events began happening around the manor. After thinning out my staff, they ransacked my estate, taking whatever they could carry. The rest of the help was quick to follow, as they feared rumors of my family's curse. I can't help but think it's more than a coincidence that strange happenings have increased since I've been back from the war. I want to get to the bottom of this, but I'm just too weak to investigate it myself. I'm relying on you to step in for me. Of course, Jeremiah. The only reason I risk coming back here is to assist you however I can. My thanks to you, Patrick. What the hell is that? Sounds like it came from downstairs. I'll check it out. Lock the door behind me. Hmm. I've arrived in time, apparently just in time. Completely bedridden, Gemma is a shadow of his old self, appearing many pounds and a few shades later. His explanation for calling to me was still unclear. He speaks of strange happenings around his state, problems that he's unable to rectify in his weakened state and has requested that I investigate. I of course agreed. Before I could ponder where to begin my exploration, the servant who showed me to Gemma's room screamed from downstairs. Often where to begin is the most difficult step. That was a scream, it sounded more like a howl. Stuck. Ah! That does also shut, I believe, so we have to go back. Who, for some reason, I don't know how she appears through here because she went the other way. Hello. <laughs> I can do that too. I can just float in midair and then just go and fly away like a madman. Sure, I can do that. That's legit. What was that sound? All oh, these doors are shut. I'm not even going to bother. I just hear Patrick say jammed. Oh, howling. Sounds like howling. Hello. Oh, hello there, ghost man again. This is where you went. You describe what you can only see? As the bonds of flesh are broken, the world becomes apparent. Yes, talk cryptic to me, I love it. <gasps> Ammo, thank you. I honestly don't know what the hell is <gasps> goes on about with stretching his head like that. It's creepy. Yeah, okay, that's actually the way to go. Jammed. And the door is jammed. Right, let's get that mouth, mouth kit. It's a health kit. Oh yeah, by the way, we do have an inventory, which I believe is F burn, yes. <coughs> we basically at the moment have ammo and health. I think it, there's no max size for it. 